Uh, I will speak about the satisfiability problem for two variable fragment of first order logic and some related results. Let me first give you uh, the plan of my talk. This is the plan for, for both parts of the talk, yes, for, for today and tomorrow. I will start uh, from the finite model property for two variable logic. In fact, this is, this is uh, the theorem by uh, Gredel, uh, Vardy, and, and Fokion Kalaitis. Uh, and this will be a starting point for, for some other results. I will show that, um, I will consider a fragment of two variable logic, two variable guarded fragments, uh, extended by a possibility of explicitly stating that some binary relations are equivalence relations. Uh, and I will show you two proofs. One, for the general satisfiability problem, which will go uh, by tree-like unravelings. This is a standard technique. And uh, it will be quite simple. Uh, and the second, the second thing is the finite satisfiability problem, yes? The question whether a given formula has a finite model. And uh, to solve this problem, we will use a translation to a solving system of linear inequalities. Uh, and because the results are quite simple, I'm going to give you enough details to complete, completely understand proofs. Yes. Uh, if time permits, I will also discuss some, some related problems. Um, I, will tell, I, I will show you that uh, if we consider full two-variable logic with equivalence, equivalence relations, then the satisfiability problem becomes undecidable. And for this, we require three, three equivalence relations. And possibly, I will also sketch, uh, sketch the proof of decidability of two-variable logic with two equivalence relations. Yes. So we will be very close to the border between decidable and undecidable cases. Uh, OK. So the first thing is two-variable fragment of, of first-order logic. Uh, by two-variable fragment of first-order logic, I, uh, I mean the fragment in which we use only two variables, x and y, but they may, may be reused, so, so the quantifier depth of the formula may be larger than two. Uh, we do not allow for function symbols because they quickly lead to undecidability. Uh, we, we can use, of course, equality symbols. Mm. Uh, as you know, as you know, uh, from the morning session, the satisfiability problem for first order logic is undecidable. This is a classical result by Church, Turing, uh, Gödel from 1930s. In fact, to show undecidability, we need only, we need only three variables. It follows, for example, from, from undecidability of Karl Moore-Wang class. It has the set of sentences which, which uh, have the prefix of quantifiers for all x exist y for all z, and then there is a quantifier free formula. Yes. Mm. What about two variable fragment? The first result in this area was uh, by Scott, who reduced uh, the satisfiability problem for FO2 to the so-called Gödel class, Gödel's class. It has the class of formula starting from a prefix of existential quantifiers, then exactly two universal quantifiers, and again a prefix of, of existential quantifiers. At those times, in 1960s, uh, it was believed that Gödel's class is decidable with equality. However, uh, Gödel wrote only the proof for the case without equality and just claimed that th this proof can be extended to the case without equality. Uh, it appeared later that it is not true uh, and the, satis the, the satisfiability problem for Gödel's class with equality is undecidable. So, so Scott's argument, in fact, worked only for, for, the for FO2 without equality. The first proof which worked for, for the full case of FO2 was given by Mortimer. And this proof was by showing that every satisfiable formula has a model of doubly exponential depth with respect to length of the formula. Yes, then you can simply, uh, uh, the procedure uh, solving the satisfiability problem just guesses such, such a model, yes, and then verifies it using uh, model checking. Which, which, is, which was also introduced uh, today in the morning. Uh, 
this, the bound on the size of the model was later improved by, by Kedel, Coitus, and Vardy. Uh, and they proved that every satisfiable formula has a model of exponential size, yes? which in fact uh, leads to next time completeness of the satisfiability problem. And this is the first thing I, 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 want, I want to show you. Mm. But before, let me also give some, some other motivations for, for, to variable logic. So one, one, one of the motivations is that uh, this is a maximal fragment of first order logic with respect to the number of variables, which is decidable. Yes. Uh, another thing is that uh, many formalisms use, used in computer science, such as modal temporal description logics and, and, other, and other, other things, uh, are essentially two variable logics. Of course, there are some exceptions. For example, in temporal logic, we use of the operator until, which, which whose natural translation requires three variables. Mm, there are also some additional constructions very often, but, but the core of the language is very often uh, two variable. For example, here is, here is uh, an example of description logic concept, which naturally translates to two variable logic with unary predicates and, and binary predicates. Some examples of, of, of formulas with two variable, of, of two variable logic are, for example, a formula which states that uh, the relation R, R connects all pairs of elements. Um, we may say that each element satisfying Q is not related by R to, uh, to, to, to an element satisfying P. Uh, we may say that a relation is anti-reflexive using just one variable. We may say that a relation is symmetric. These are very natural formulas. An interesting formula is, is uh, that one which says that um, in a model there is at most one element satisfying P. We just write that if for all x, y, if P x and P y, then x is equal to y. Yes? Uh, in fact, this is a formula which, which calls that the, this Gödel's class is undecidable with equality. Yes? Uh, we may also, oh, here is, there is also an example for using variables. We may say that each element satisfying P is uh, connected to an element satisfying Q by a path, R, R path of length 3. Yes. In a natural way, we reuse the variables, the variables to go from, from, from an element in P to an element in Q. An example of a property which is not expressible in two variable logic is that a binary relation R is transitive. We hear today that we cannot, uh, in, in first order logic, we cannot say that a relation is a transitive closure of a relation, yes? Of course, we can say in first order logic that, that R is transitive. Yes? This is using three variables, but we cannot do it with two variables. And the argument, uh, argument is, is as follows. So in a moment, we will see that every satisfiable f of two formula has a finite model, yes? If we if, assume to the contrary that we have a formula which expresses transitivity of R, it tests in every model of, of this formula, R is interpreted as a transitive relation. Yes? Then the following simple formula, which says that R is transitive. For each element, there exists the R, an, R, an R successor of, of this element, yes? And none of the elements is related to R by itself. is satisfiable because it can be satisfied in the set of natural numbers uh, and uh, if we interpret R as less than relation, yes. strict less than relation. So there is a model of this, but, but it is easy to see that there is no finite model. Yes. At none point, we cannot reuse an earlier element as, as, as this uh, R successor, because then an element would become R related to itself because of transitivity. OK, so this, these are some examples. Uh, uh, one more example, in, in two variable logic, I, I told you that we, we will see that every satisfiable formula has a model of at most exponential size with respect to the formula. Uh, here we see that this, uh, this result will, will be essentially optimal uh, because we, we can enforce exponential models in a, in a very simple way. If having two variables, we may say, we may, uh, okay, let us, let, us, let us think that we have uh, unary predicates P0, P0, P1, up to Pn minus 1, and they, using the, those predicates, we may encode numbers, yes? Each element encodes uh, a number from, from uh, the range from 0 up to 2 to the n, uh, in a natural way, as a binary encoding, and uh, having two variables, it is easy to write uh, that 
an element encodes a value greater by one than another element. Yes. Here is an explicit formula. This is of uh, quadratic length with, with respect to the uh, to the size uh, with respect to n. Yes, it just says that there is a point in which one, one of the elements encodes one and the other encodes zero. All uh, positions to the right are ones in, in one of the four, uh, elements, zeros in the other elements, and uh, all the positions to the left are identical. So, uh, of course, having such a, for, having such a formula, we, we now can easily say that uh, um, a model contains all, uh, uh, all the numbers from zero up to two to the n minus one, yes? By saying that there exists an element encoding zero, and for each element there is an, there is an element encoding uh, a number greater by one. Okay. Uh, I will use notions, uh, I will use the notion of atomic types. Uh, so what is an at atomic one type? Atomic one type of an element in a structure A is uh, a complete description of the structure on this element, yes? So we simply say, uh, this, this one type simply says which unary predicates are true in this, ele in this element and which, uh, and which uh, binary relations are true on, on this element and this element again. Yeah. So, for example, if we have mm, uh, two unary relations, P and Q, and a binary relation R, an example of the one type may be Px, not Q, X and not Rxx. Yes, a complete information about the element. Mm, uh, similarly, uh, we have a notion of uh, an atomic two type, which gives an information, complete information about a pair of elements and connections between this pair of elements. Yes. So, for example, we, the two type has two free variables, x and y. Yes. And it, we may say that p is true at x, q is not true at x, uh, not r x x, not and, and in R, uh, P, uh, EY, P is not true, Q is not true, uh, R, YY is true, R, X, Y is true, and not R, Y, X is true. Yes. So, uh, in our constructions, we will consider only signatures of consisting of unary and binary relation symbols. Uh, so, note that under this assumption, to completely specify a structure, it is enough to, uh, to specify its domain, the list of one types of elements, and the list of two types of elements. Yes. If, if there are no relations of greater R, it is, and it is enough. We know the structure. So uh, the theorem I, I want to prove is uh, the theorem of the Coates and Vardy, which says that every satisfiable formula has a model of size at most exponential with respect to However, because I'm going to use this result uh, in the following parts of my talk, I will prove a slight variation of this result, a slightly stronger result, in fact, namely that, uh, um, namely lemma four, four here. So let phi be an FO2 formula, and let A be its arbitrary model. Uh, then there is a model A prime of phi, of, phi, of size exponential with respect to, to the length of the formula, such that its domain is a subset of the domain of, of the original model A, and the one types of elements are retained, yes? Uh, so, so this is a slight generalization of, of this uh, lemma three, because in, 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 this, uh, in this lemma three, uh, we built, we just simply show that there exists a model of, of, of exponential size. And uh, here we also say that from, from every model we can choose a substructure and slightly modify it without touching one types to obtain a model. The first step in the construction is uh, establishing a normal form. Yes? We, we, we show that, it is, uh, that we can concentrate on some simple uh, uh, on formulas of, of a simple shape. In this case, the shape of these formulas in normal form will be like this. Uh, we have a universal, universally quantified formula for all x, y, and something about x, y. And this something, this, this phi zero, is quantifier free. Yes. 
And then we have m formulas of the form for all x exist y, phi i of x, y. And again, this phi i are quantifier free. Uh, and we can prove that for every FO2 formula, we can compute a formula in normal form such that uh, they are, uh, phi prime is satisfiable if and only if phi is, uh, phi is satisfiable. Moreover, we can show that every model of phi can be expanded to a model of phi prime. Expanded because phi prime will use a slightly richer vocabulary, yes? Its, its vocabulary, will, its signature will be extended by some unary symbols. And, uh, and uh, in other direction, every model of phi, phi prime, phi prime, if restricted to its original signature, will be a model of phi. Uh, in fact, there is also lemma five on this slide, which says that uh, mm, we can get rid of uh, symbols of parity greater than, than two. I will skip, skip uh, the proof of this. In fact, this is quite, quite easy construction also. So the proof of this normal form um, goes in the following way. Uh, we start from some formulas, sub, sub, sub formulas of phi, which are of the form quantifier, variable, and uh, quantifier free formula. Yes. And we uh, substitute su such uh, sub formulas by unary predicates. Yes. To ensure, for example, for, here we, we have just an example, yes? We have a formula of the form there exists y that's something, both x and y. Uh, we introduce a fresh variable p, and we try to enforce that for all x, p of x is equivalent to exist y, psi of x, y, yes? Uh, and it can be easily checked that, that uh, this equivalence can be uh, enforced using using uh, a conjunction of two formulas of the shape which appear in our normal form. Uh, and we, we proceed analogously with some formulas of, of, of the other possible, possible shapes, and we repeat the process from, from down to up until, until we, we get formula in normal form. Okay, so, so now we restrict our attention to formulas of normal form. What is the plan of, of the proof of the theorem? We, we start from an arbitrary model, possibly infinite. We distinguish in, in this model three subsets of elements, each of them of exponentially bounded size. Uh, and uh, the elements from this subset will, will become the domain of our new, new of our small model. Uh, in fact, this new structure, A prime, will be mm, the connections between elements from C and D will, will be taken from the original, original, original structure. Similarly, the connections between D and, uh, D and E. Yes, we only slightly modify the connections between C and D. So here is how, how the proof works. Recall the number four. We have a formula which says that for all x, y something, and uh, some formulas that for all uh, x exist y that something. Yes. The, uh, let, uh, let us take an arbitrary model A. This model will, will appear here. A fragment of the, this model will, will, appear, will, will appear on this picture. And the first fragment of this model is, uh, is called C here. What is C? So in C, we put all the elements from, from the original model whose one types are rare in, in this model. I mean, whose one types are realized at most m times. Yes, then, then we take all realizations of such, such one types to, to this fragment C. And uh, for all of the remaining one types, we choose m arbitrary realizations of them. Yes? So here on this picture, we have one types are represented by colors. Yes? So, so we have one realization of a red type, which means that, that in the whole model there were, there were only one realization of this. We have, uh, for example, two realizations of, of, uh, blue type, of yellow type, three realizations of green type. So, so there, were, there were respectively two yellow elements and, th and three uh, green elements in the orig original model A. Yes. All the remaining types, I mean pink, this, this should be gray, I think, and, and blue were, were uh, were realized more than 
m times. So we have chosen m realizations of them and put them to the set C. Yeah? So this is the first fragment of, of, our, of the universe of our new structure. Of course, uh, if, uh, if we consider the substructure induced by, 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 by this set C, then, then, uh, then it obviously satisfies this universal conjunct of, of our formula phi, yes? because this is just the substructure of the original model. Yes? But uh, the, second, uh, the, the, the formulas of the second kind may be not satisfied, uh, because, oh, 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 sorry, okay. So in the original, consider consider the the the, the blue element in the uh, lower right corner. In the original structure, we had uh, the so-called witnesses for this element and these uh, formulas of, of type for all exists. Yes? A witness for, for a conjunct of this type and an element uh, is an element which together with, with, uh, with this, this first element satisfies phi i of this y. Yes? Uh, so of course in a model of, 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 of a formula phi we had m witnesses for the blue element and these formulas of type for all exists. Mm, at most m, because sometimes an element may serve as, as a witness for, for more than one, one subformula. Of course, not, not necessarily all of them were members of C. Yes. So what we do, we extend, uh, we define a new set D which contains witnesses for all, all the elements from C. Yes. So we repeat, uh, we, we choose witnesses for each of the elements, at most I am m of them, and we collect them to, to the set. And we repeat this step one, once more. Yes. OK, so we, we repeat this step once more. Yes. We choose witnesses for elements from D and collect them into a set E. Uh, and now, consider an element from, from the set E. Again, in the original structure, it has witnesses for all subformulas of the form for all exists. Some of them uh, live in, in this fragment C plus D plus E plus E, but some of them are uh, not members of, the, of this fragment. But now, observe that we can uh, modify the, this, the structure induced by C, by C plus D and E uh, to fulfill all these requirements of, of, of the elements from E in the set C. Because in C, we have at most m realizations of each, each type, which were realized at least m times. Of course, uh, of course e, uh, the elements from E have, uh, the elements from E can have witnesses outside this, this small fragment only if, 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 if these elements have types which, are, which were realized, realized at most m times. Yes. So we can modify the connections between E and C. For example, if you consider the gray element and its, its gray witness, we, instead of using this gray witness outside C plus D and E, as a witness, we can use one of the gray elements in, in, in C as a witness. Simply by copying the, uh, copying the connection between these two gray elements to, to this new tile. Yes. We have enough elements in, 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 in C to uh, to provide all the witnesses for elements from, from E. Because for each element, we, we may require at most M witnesses. Okay? So in fact, this, this finishes the construction, yes? We have a structure consisting of at most exponentially many elements. Because how many elements we have in, in C? Uh, for each one type, we put in C at most m realizations, where m is linear in the size of, of the formula. Yes? And num the number of one types is exponential. The number of one types are, uh, to construct a one type, you simply say whether each symbol from a vocabulary, for each symbol of the vocabulary, we say 
that p of x or not p of x. Yeah? So two, two choices. So the number of uh, one types is exponential with respect to the size of the vocab vocabulary. Of course, we may restrict our vocabulary to the symbols which appear in, in the formula phi. Yes. So, this is so this is exponentially many times linearly many. Yes. Uh, in, in the set D, uh, for each element in, from C, we add at most m elements. Yes. Similarly, in E, uh, for each element from D, we, we add at most m elements. So the total number of, the, uh, of elements in C plus D plus E is exponential with respect to the size of formula phi. And it is a model. It is it is a model of, of phi, yes, because uh, in fact all, all all binary connections are taken from A. So 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 the formula for all x y phi zero x y is satisfied. Yes, and for each element we have witnesses. We we take we took care of this for for this. So if if we know that every satisfiable formula has a model of exponential size, we may conclude that the satisfiability problem for two variable logic is in the next time. Why? We, we guess a model, yes, and we verify that this is, that, that this is a model. This verification, is, as I told, is, is made using model checking. Uh, tomorrow in the morning we saw that model checking problem is p-space for first order logic. But it is not, not hard to see that if we restrict our attention to two variable fragment, that it becomes, uh, this, th th then the problem is in p. Yes. So we simply guess a structure, in non-deterministic exponential time, because we have exponentially large structures, and we verify that phi is uh, true in this structure. Next one. Uh, the a lower bound is easy to obtain using this trick with counting up to two to the n. Yes, I, I'm I'm going to skip to skip. In the further part of my talk, I will need uh, one more simple simple observation. Uh, let me define a notion of a royal, a royal type and a king. This, these are the notions which appear in the original, or, original paper by uh, Gredel, Coitus, and Vagdi. So what is, what is a king? Consider a, consider a structure, yes. Uh, a king is an element whose one type is realized only once in this structure. And such a type is called royal, yes. Uh, recall that we can enforce uh, royal types. We, we can say, for example, that there's exa at most one p in a model. Yes? For all x, y, if p, x, if you y, then x is equal to y. Uh, and the observation in lemma, in lemma 9 says uh, that if we take an arbitrary model of a formula phi, then, and an arbitrary non-royal type realized in this, in this, in this uh, model, this type is called t here, then we can uh, to this model A, we can add an, an additional realization of a type, this type T. And the proof of this fact is also very simple. Consider a model A, and, uh, and let, us, uh, let us try to add an additional realization of, of the yellow element. These uh, colored edges between elements represent two types here, yes, connections between elements. So we can add an additional element uh, of yellow type and connect this, uh, this element with uh, all the elements in the original structure A with the exception of this, of this, of this, uh, this uh, re realization of a yellow type exactly as, as this element was connected to those elements. Yes. They are the same colors. In this way, observe that we will definitely we will, we will, uh, ensure that the new element has all the required witnesses. And of course, we won't violate this for all for all properties because we take our two types from the original model. The only thing which, which is left to do is to connect the new yellow element with this original one. Yes. But uh, we can do it, sa uh, do it safely because we, we know that there were at least, at least two realizations of, 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 of a yellow color in, of the yellow color in, in the original model. Yes. So we simply take this connection and connect the new element with the original one using the same type of connection. So definitely we won't violate for all for, for all for formula this way. Observe that it's important here that uh, that uh, this, this yellow type is not royal, yes? Because for royal type, we wouldn't have this, this pattern. Okay, so, so this way we prove that every satisfiable formula 
in two variable logic has a model of exponential size. Now I would like to consider uh, another problem. Uh, we, I want to show that uh, something called guarded fragment restricted to two variables is decidable with equivalence relations. Let, let me define, let me first define the guarded fragment of first order logic. Uh, so the guarded fragment was introduced by Andrejka von Bentham and Nemeti. And in guarded fragment, in general, we uh, do not restrict the number of variables. Okay? So this is the definition of the whole guarded fragment. Uh, in this fragment, quantifiers have to be relativized by atomic formulas. So if we want to say, for example, for all y, where y may be here a tuple of variables, for all y, phi of x, y, then we have to put an atomic formula called guard here. Yeah? So for uh, all y such that, and here we have an atomic formula, something happens. And analogously for, uh, for uh, existential formulas. So this is the only, uh, the only restriction yet, and th this, this, uh, this logic is closed under Boolean operators and uh, all atomic formulas belong to guarded fragment. We may use equality. Uh, here are some, some example formulas. Mm. For example, the, the, the formula defining sym symmetry of a binary relation is guarded. Yes, for all x, y, if x is connected to y by r, then something. Yes, this, this r, this, this blue uh, at atomic formulas are guards here. Yes, uh, as you see in the third example, as a guard, we may also use equality. So in fact, uh, if we just quantify a single variable, the guard is not necessary yes, because we always have, have equality. Uh, some formulas which are, which are not guarded are, for example, um, the first form formula which says that there exists x satisfying p and uh, for all y, z, if r, x, y, something. Yes. r, x, y is not a proper guard here because uh, because uh, it does not contain z. Uh, the next formula defines transitivity of a binary relation. It is, it is not a guarded formula because um, it is rel 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 relativized by a conjunction of two formulas and not at an atomic formula. Uh, the third formula which says that for all x, y, if p, x, and p, y, then, for example, e is, uh, there, there is, uh, x is connected to y or by e, we could also try to say here that x is equal to y. Yes. Uh, this is not guarded again because, because uh, mm, this, this uh, formula rel rel relativizing a quantifier is not atomic. So as you see, in the guarded fragment, we, we, cannot, we cannot enforce that there is a royal type in a, in a model. We, we see that it is not, not easy at least. We, we, we will see in a moment that it's not possible. Okay. It can be also observed that, that this uh, description logic concept which, we, which I show, uh, showed uh, at the beginning of the talk is, is translated in fact in the, in, into the guarded, guarded to variable fragment. Yes, because uh, these formulas Cxy and Cyx are atomic formulas are guards here. Mm. A short review of results on the guarded fragment. Uh, so uh, Eric Gredos proved that uh, guarded fragment has uh, also has the finite model property. Every, for, uh, every satisfiable formula has a finite model. Uh, the complexity of satisfiability problem is deterministic doubly exponential. Um, in the general case, and if we restrict the number of variables to some constant, in particular to two, then, uh, then the problem becomes x time complete, complete for a singly exponential deterministic time. Uh, there are many interesting extensions of, of two variable garbage fragment and, and two variable garbage fragment, uh, and, and the whole garbage fragment, in fact. For example, by fixed point operators, constant, transitive relations, and so on, which are decidable. About one of these extensions, you, you, uh, you will hear the talk uh, by, by Dietmar. Uh, so what, what I'm going to show you. Mm, I'm going to show that the two-variable guarded fragment, it is the restriction of the guarded fragment to two variables, mm, 
is decidable when extended by equivalence relations. Uh, what, what do I mean? Mm. We consider uh, just two variable guarded formulas uh, in which, and, and if you want to, uh, to construct models from, from them, we, we are uh, enforced to interpret some binary symbols as equivalence relations. So we simply have a list of binary, or a list of equivalence relations, yes, and uh, a list of symbols for binary relations, and, and they have to be interpreted as equivalences. Unfortunately, uh, if we consider such a language, the problem will be, decidable, uh, will be undecidable. To obtain a decidability, we have to uh, restrict the usage of those special equivalent symbols only to guards. Well, this is why I called it two-variable guard, the fragment of equivalence guards. Uh, so as I told you, I want to consider first the general satisfiability problem and then the finite satisfiability problem. Both of them appear to be uh, complete for non-deterministic exponential time. Mm. So, so today I would, I, I, I would like to, mm, to show you all only this, this first theorem, yeah, that the general satisfiability problem is decidable in, in next time. Mm. Uh, before, just a short, short motivation for for, for this, this logic. So one of the main drawbacks of, of guarded fragment and two-variable logic is, is that we cannot express transitivity, transitivity of a binary relation. Yes, I, I, I explained, uh, explained to you why. Uh, the argument for guarded fragment, of course, of course is uh, analogous to the argument for two-variable logic. Yes, we have finite model properties. Uh, analogously, in none of the guarded fragment and two-variable logic, we cannot say that a binary relation is an equivalence relation. And I will show you in a moment a formula which is on the infinite models. Uh, of course, transitive and equivalence relations are very natural and uh, it would be nice to have them in some practical applications. Uh, so, so, so this is why we consider, we consider this guarded fragment with equivalence guards. And uh, here, uh, th this is an example of a formula which has only infinite models. Yes, we have two equivalence relations, E1 represented on, on this picture by uh, red color and E2 represented by blue color. And what we say, we say that there exists an element satisfying P and S. We say that every element satisfying P is connected by E1 to an element satisfying Q not equal to x for simplicity. Similarly, each element satisfying q is connected by e2 to an element satisfying p. And if, we, if you consider this, this first three, uh, uh, three sub-formulas, uh, we, we may build a natural model, model for, for them. Yes, we start from, from an element in p and s, then we choose an element, we, we add an element satisfying q and connect it to, to this element, this first element by e1, then we choose a new element satisfying P and connect, connect e, it to the previous element satisfying Q by E2, and, and so on in alternative fashion. Yes, we, we construct some infinite, some infinite chain. To enforce that this chain has to be infinite, we add three additional formulas. The first one says that uh, each pair of elements connected by E1, uh, sorry, it says that in every E1 class, there is at most one element satisfying we, do, we, we enforce it in, in by saying that for all pairs of elements connected by E1, uh, Px and Py implies that x is equal to one. The, the trick we used, uh, about which I talk, told, told, told you like, uh, earlier. Similarly, in E2 classes, uh, we allow only for at most one element satisfying Q. Okay. And uh, before or because of this first element uh, in, in P and S, we, we say that uh, for each element satisfying S, its E2 class is trivial. It consists only of, a it is only a, it's just a singleton. Yes. And now, if we would like to <coughs> try to reuse at some point one of the earlier elements, we will violate one of these three 
lower contract. Yes, for example, if for, uh, for the element Q, we would like to reuse one of the earlier elements satisfying P as, as a witness for, for, for the third uh, formula, then two elements satisfying Q would become E2 connected, would become me members of the same E2 class, yes? which is forbidden by, by the fifth formula. Yes. Uh, the, the last formula is, is just for, because, because uh, is the, the reason for the last formula is that uh, sometimes we, we could try to reuse the first element as a witness, yes? so, so we forbid it explicitly. Okay, so this formula is satisfiable, but only in infinite models. So if we want to show uh, decidability of a two-variable guarded fragment of equivalence guards, we have to take into account this infinite model somehow. Observe that, uh, in fact, this guarded fragment with two variables and equivalence guards may be seen as an extension of full two-variable logic, because every first order formula, for, for example, this formula in normal form, may be translated to, to, to variable guarded fragment of equivalence guards by using one of the equivalence relations as, as an artificial guard, yes, uh, artificial relativization of, of uh, multipliers. So instead of saying for all xy, phi xy, we say for all xy, which are connected by one phi xy. Yes? And similarly for, uh, for these formulas of type for all exists. This way, uh, if, if uh, this FO2 formula is satisfiable, then we may construct a model of, of, of the second formula consisting of just one equivalence class of, of E1 relation. And in the opposite direction, if there is a model of the lower formula, then we can take its arbitrary equivalence class and it will be a model of, of this two-variable formula. So as a corollary, we get that uh, the satisfiability problem for a uh, guarded fragment with two variables equivalent guards is next time hard, yes, because it follows from next time hardness of mm, FO2. How can we obtain the upper bound? So we, we will see that every satisfiable formula has a model of a tree-like shape. And then I will argue that uh, such tree-like models can be made regular and uh, their existence can be very easily checked. So uh, I will explain it. In, uh, I will explain these three unla unravelings in a, in a moment. Uh, of course, we will need some kind of normal form, as in the case of two-variable logic, to make to make things uh, simpler. And this normal form is very similar. So uh, we have some. We may say that there exist some elements satisfying some. There exist. There there, there are some elements whose uh, one types are defined by alpha x and psi x. Uh, and then we, we have universal formulas, yes, for all x, y, something, but they have to be guarded. And I, tr I, I decided to distinguish two kinds of, of uh, such formulas, one with uh, uh, equivalence relations in guards. And these are the formulas for all x, y, e i x, y, then something, yes, and the second uh, kind of formulas are uh, the formulas with symbols which are not required to be equivalences, yes, to, to be interpreted as equivalences. Similarly, for uh, for all exist formulas, yes, for all x, if alpha of x, where, where alpha is in guard, yes, uh, there exist y, and again, either it is connected to to x by an equivalence relation e i, there is uh, some number of equivalence relations or it is connected to x by a non-equivalent relation, yes. by, by a relation which is not required to be interpreted as, equivalence, as an equivalence. Recall this restriction that uh, equivalence relations appear only in guards. So we cannot have uh, symbols EI in, in those uh, formulas Psi. This is crucial for, for the proof, in fact.
this is just just a statement that uh, that uh, we can we can restrict our attention to normal for formulas. It is not as nice as in the case of two-variable logic because because we say that for every formula in guarded fragment with equivalence guards, we can compute a formula which is a disjunction of formulas of, of, of exponential number of formulas in normal form. This is this is a disjunction, but it is not harmful because. We, we are going to show that the problem is next, in next time, so we can simply compute. Uh, yes? Yes? Uh, they are very similar. The first one uses guards of the form ri xy and the second ri y, y x. So. Okay, they could be written as a single formula. <laughs> uh, okay, so. Uh, Going back to, to this lemma, we show that for every formula we can compute a disjunction of normal form formulas. Yes, and in, the, in, in our proof, we will simply we can simply compute such a normal for, uh, such a disjunction of normal form formulas because we are going to sh to, to, to use non-deterministic exponential time, so there is no problem with this, and we can si simply check each of them separately. Yes, we, are, we, we can check if one of these subformulas is satisfied. So in fact, we are, now we restrict our attention to formulas in normal form. Mm, sometimes I will use a notation mm, uh, phi with sub, superscript ek, which denotes the fragment of this formula consisting of, <coughs> of those conjuncts which uh, either speak about uh, the relation ek or uh, so, so in, uh, about those uh, those formulas uh, in, in which EK is, is, is a guard, mm. and about all universally quantified quantifiered conjuncts with uh, these non-equivalent symbols. Yes. So, phi is, is a fragment a fragment of uh, of the formula which doesn't speak about. Uh, about uh, equivalence re uh, relations different than the K and doesn't speak about um, these formulas of the form for all X exist Y we, and, and then uh, a guard which is not EK. So consider now, consider now a model of, 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 uh, of a formula in normal form. This is a, this is a picture. Um, there is six elements and uh, what is the meaning of, of colors here? So red connections Rep uh, represent this is a, this is an equivalence relation e, e1 yes. blue connections the equivalence relation e2 green connections the equivalence relation e3 uh, there is there are also two uh, black arrows which represent the connection by a binary binary relation which is not an equivalence uh, which does not contain an equivalence relation Yes. <laughs> what we are going to do, we are going to unravel this model into a tree, which is still a model of, of, uh, of, of the formula phi. How we obtain such, such an unraveling? Mm. We start from, uh, from elements which satisfy the, the, those existential formulas from normal, normal, normal form. Yes. In the normal form, we have formulas of the form x, exist x, such that something, yes. So we can start from such elements. Assume that there is just one, one such element here, say yellow element. And let us uh, build on the first level of the tree all the information which is required for, which, which, which can be seen from, from, from this yellow element. So we, uh, we take its E1 class, yes, consisting of three elements. So we add uh, this orange element and this, this pink element. We take its E2 class, consisting of pink element and the blue element, and we take its green class, we, so, so we add one, one red element. Uh, observe that we have now two copies of, of the pink element from the original model, but uh, there is no, no danger here, yes, because we put, we put no connections between these uh, pink elements. So, uh, guarded formulas cannot cannot forbid such two, two elements here. Yes. Uh, in other words, 
uh, we connected the two pink elements by a binary free type. Yes? There, are, there are no binary connections here. So, so uh, having su two such elements here cannot violate formulas of the form for all x, for all y, because they can speak only about connections element, yes, for all x, for all y, if r x y then sum. So here, this is, uh, co uh, so, so splitting such, such pink element into pink, two, two, two copies is not dangerous here. And we repeat the process, yes? We now uh, consider the elements from, from this first level. Uh, for example, and, and, we, uh, and we add, Mm, and we add their classes and, and uh, the elements connected to them by, by non-equivalent connections. For example, uh, from this orange element, uh, we add a copy of red element, yes? And, and connect, connect this red element with, with, uh, with uh, orange element in exactly the same way as they were connected in, in the original model, yes? Uh, we do not add a copy of... Uh, E1 class, this red class for, 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 for the orange element, because, because such a class is, is constructed yes, on, 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 the first, on, on the earlier levels. For the pink element, we have, uh, we have its uh, red class built earlier, yes? so we, we just add its uh, blue class and uh, green class, yes, and so on. We do, we do it for all elements, and we continue this process, usually infinitely, yes, because, because uh, for, for example, in, in this example, we see that there will be an infinite, an infinite path, yes, yellow, orange, red, yellow. And again, there will be an uh, orange element and so on. Yes. So starting even from a finite, finite model, we will usually uh, obtain an infinite model. Okay, so, so this is the first step, step of our construction. Unravel, unravel the model into a tree. Sorry? No, uh, no, uh, no, no. Consider, for example, this, this pink element, yes? Uh, I look at, at the, original, in the original model and I, I, do not, I do not add an additional copy of, of, uh, of red equivalence relation because this pink element in, in this tree has its red uh, equivalence class, yes? So, but, but, but I add a copy of blue class and uh, green class. Uh, uh, for, for, for the case of those black arrows, I, I also pro provide them, yes? So for example, for this, for this green element, which comes with its uh, red relation, yes, to, to this tree, red equivalence class. Uh, the only thing which, which it may need is it's this black arrow to a to, uh, blue element. Yes. Okay, so, so such a structure is still a model of phi, yes? Because all, uh, all non-trivial connection, binary connections in, in the model are taken from, from the original model, yes? Non-trivial, I mean, those containing some positive binary uh, atoms. Yes. Mm. And for all elements, of course, we take all the required witnesses, yes? because every element, in this, and every element in this model of, say, uh, red type can see, can see exactly the same, the same types of elements which, which were seen by red, uh, by red element in the original model. Yes? Uh, can be seen and, 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 in fact, is connected by the same two types. Okay, so the problem now is that uh, those classes in, 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 in the original model and, and, it, and it, it, in its tree unraveling uh, could be very large or even infinite. Yes? For example, we, we may have the following situation in the original model. The blue class may, may contain, I'll say, infinite number of elements. Yes? as on this picture. Mm. However, what do we want from, from such an equivalence class? We want, it, we want from it only to provide uh, witnesses to, to the formulas uh, from phi i, uh, blue, blue is E2, so, so in, the, in the case of blue connections, uh, formulas for, from phi uh, 
I2. Sorry, uh, sorry. Uh, consider just formulas uh, which have E2 in, in, in guard, yes? So from this, from this uh, class, we only want to provide witnesses to, for, to, to the yellow element for formulas of the form for all x exists y connected to this yellow element by e2, yes? But um, in fact, we can here just reuse the construction for two-variable logic, yes? Because such, such, a, such a single class may be seen as a model for two-variable formula uh, without guards. Okay, this, this is not clear, sorry. Uh, Let us look at this normal form. Yes. Uh, the purpose of, of, uh, of the E2 class of the formula is just to provide witnesses for, for the elements of, of uh, the fourth type, yes. with E2 as, as, as a guard. Uh, the class, in, in this E2 class, we, sh we should also satisfy all the universal formulas which have E2 as, as, as a guard, and those universal formulas which have non-equivalence relations as, as guards. We do, not have to satis we do not have to bother about formulas which have uh, some other equivalence relations in, in guards because uh, these formulas Psi cannot speak about, about another, another equivalence relations. So in fact, what we do, we, we, look, we, we look at such a, such, a, such a E2 class, for example, as a model for FO2 formula constructed from, from this, just for, from this conjunct uh, containing E2 and all the remaining uh, universally quantified conjuncts without equivalence relations, yes? And we assume that uh, this FO2 formula says that for all XY, E2 XY. And we just apply the construction I presented for two-variable logic. Yes. This way we obtain a model of this formula, a small model of this formula. Uh, or like, like here, for example. It's just by removing some, some, some elements. And connect, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe same, changing some connections here. Yes. But changing in a safe way. In such a way that all elements from, from this class will have the required witnesses in, inside this class. Yes. So we, we apply this construction for all classes in our model. This way obtaining a model with small classes. Yes. Similarly, of course, uh, we may have, uh, from, from one, one point, we may have many uh, black arrows. Yes. Mm. But what is the purpose of these black arrows? To provide witnesses for formulas of the form for all x, exist y, connected to x by non-equivalent connection. There is a bounded number of such formulas, so we can, we can simply choose only some small number of, of witnesses, yes. linear with respect to the size of the formula, as we did for two-variable logic. So, so then, for all elements, in this tree we have some number of small classes, the number of these classes is, 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 of course, linear in, with respect to the size of the formula, and some number also linear uh, of, uh, of the elements which are called free witnesses. Free meaning non-equivalently connected. Yes. Uh, so this is, this is the statement uh, of, of the theorem about, about the shape of such models. We have small classes. And uh, in fact, we obtain the property that uh, the intersection of an E1 class and an E2 class, for example, contains at most one, one element. Because, uh, because we, um, we constructed the model in such a way that we, we split the elements if, if necessary. Yes. If, if, there were connected, if there were, a connection, uh, there were two connections from an element to another element, E1 and E2, then we simply construct, uh, constructed two copies of this element and connected one of them by E1 and one by E2. Uh, okay, so it's also not hard to see that such models may be constructed in a regular way. What, what I mean by, by a regular way, mm. we may define 
a seed for a model. What is, what is a seed? Uh, it is just a set of one types which are going to be realized in this model. And for each one type, a pattern which says how to construct E1 class for this, uh, for this type, how to construct E2 tab type for this, for, for this class, and how to construct three witnesses for this class. So for each one type, we in fact mm, need only exponential number of elements, uh, exponential, exponentially bounded information. Classes and three witnesses. Uh, and I claim that a normal for formula has, is satisfiable if and only if it has a seed for a true-like model of, of, of this kind. Obviously, if, if a formula has, has a model, then it has a true-like model we, we saw a moment ago. Okay? So for every, we, we can choose a re realization of a type, take its class, its classes, and take its three witnesses to the seed. Yes? In the opposite direction, if you ha we have a seed, then we simply start from elements satisfying these existential formulas, exist x at something, yes? And provide classes and witnesses to, to those elements using the seed. Yes? We have an element, we take its class from, from, this, from, the, from the pattern, E2 class, E3 class, and so on, three witnesses and so on. Then for, for the, the elements on the first level of the tree, we proceed analogously. If we need an E1 class, we take it from the seed. And so on, yes? This is uh, quite quite easy, uh, quite easy uh, observation, and it, it follows that the satisfiability problem for, for this this logic is uh, next time complete. Because what is the the, the procedure now? Just guess, guess a seed for a model, yes, and check that this is this is a proper seed. Checking checking the properties of a seed is quite quite uh, easy. I, I do not. Uh, show all the properties which, which are required, but they are quite natural. Yes, for every element, the seed should, should provide all the required witnesses without violating for all for, for formulas. Yes, I, I think this is, this is all, I wanted, all I wanted to say. Tomorrow I want, I wanted, I want to concentrate on the finite satisfiability problem. Yes, so because because as, as I mentioned, uh, this way we construct, usually we construct infinite models. So, so the finest, so this viability problem will be slightly, slightly harder, but it is crucial, yes, it is crucial. If we allow two, two equivalent symbols to appear outside guard, then the problem becomes undecided. Ah, so, so okay, so in fact, I, I will show you, uh, I will sh uh, show you the moment. I think here is a, such a moment, yes. We had, uh, from, from the yellow element, we had uh, connections to, to a pink element, two equivalence connections, E1 and E2, yes? And we can split this element into two copies and co con co connect one of these copies only by red relation and the other one only by blue relation. So here, between this uh, pink element and the yellow element, there is no uh, uh, red connection. And again, it is not dangerous because Because this normal form formulas cannot use in the third in the third uh, conjunct they cannot use uh, equivalence symbols in psi. Yes. Uh, you 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 think about a loosely guarded fragment or something like this. So uh, I'm not sure, I'm sure that with transitive relations we cannot do so because because this result uh, gen generalized to transitive relations. We can, we can prove a similar result with transitive, with transitive relations in guards. So I'm sure that those regarded fragment with transitive relations is undecidable. In guards, it's trans undecidable. I think that with equivalence relations, it, it will also be undecidable. So the restriction to the guarded fragment, this original guarded fragment is important. Three. FO2 with three, with three equivalence relations is undecidable. No. FO3, sorry. FO3 with two equivalences. No. FO with two equivalent relations is undecided. That's an old result from the 70s. FO. Is Based it? on the logic. Yes. With two equivalent relations. With one equivalent relation is decided. You have an elimination of quantum. Mm -hmm. I, you think about the case in which equivalent relation is, is the only symbol in the signature. Aha, yeah, yes. Thank you.